Most Rush Trap bases have a series of what I would call design defects that kind of suck the fun out of the experience. For example, take a look at this 2x2 two two trap base. You know, the person comes in, shotgun trap kills him, and the owner comes out of this room and loots the body. Well, he tries to loot the body. Most of the time in high pop servers where you want to build a trap base, there's going to be someone with the victim, or there's going to be someone nearby who hears the shotguns, and then you're in this gunfight trying to loot the body, and uh, you know sometimes they go deep on you because you're not able to respawn in time and get all the person's loot back into your storage area. So that's one design that one design defect that I want to improve upon today. The second is a, a lot of rust trap bases require you to sit and wait. To me, that's boring. I don't like sitting in a trap base and just waiting for people to come in. Sometimes you may wait. 30 minutes or an hour before anybody comes in it and it just gets kind of old. I think that's solvable and I'm going to show you how to do it today. The third is a lot of times rust trap bases they require complex electrical circuits. So yeah your trap base can do really cool things but it also requires you to build this you know on, on stand circuit that requires a bunch of resources and, and blueprints to do something fairly simple. Take a look at this trap base I've built today. This base is different than a lot of the trap bases I've seen in Rust. It's self-sealing, meaning the, whenever the victim dies in the trap base, the base seals itself up so their friends can't come and help them or loot their body. It's nearly autonomous, meaning you don't even have to be in the base for it to work. It lets you know when someone came in. It also requires zero electricity which is something that is really important in my opinion because if, you, if you're on the outside of a base and you're scoping it out and trying to decide if it's worth going in and you see like eight solar panels on the roof that's a dead giveaway that there, there's something going on inside something electrical something complex is going on inside that base but this one doesn't even require any electricity also notice the decision to leave some of the base wooden and twig and it give it that noob look like someone didn't really know what they were doing and had grandiose dreams of building this amazing base but it all all <laughs> didn't work out like they wanted it to it looks partially raided all that's super important to get people to actually come in the base and explore and see if there's any leftover loot so whenever someone does come in this door is blocking the path forward and the only way forward is to jump up on the shelf so if you crouch jump on the shelf I'm dead. I was full metal and now I'm dead. And this, if you, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm wounded right now so I can't look around, but the door we went in, it shut by itself. So the base killed me by itself. It trapped me in here by itself. My friends can't come and help me. And it let me, the owner, know that someone came in my base and died. I'm gonna respawn here. And we're going to take a look at how this base works, and I'm going to show you how to build it. If God mode was off, I could do that. I'm on the, the Sanctuary build server. One second here, and I'll, I'll respawn. If you haven't had a chance to check out Vice's Sanctuary build server, it's phenomenal. Highly recommended. It's, I've, I've been playing this game for a long time now. Four years and 6,000 hours, and I haven't found a better build server than Vice's. Alright, let's take a look at what this base has to offer. So you can see that the door is closed now. And teleporting through the wall, there's my potty and <laughs> I don't know, I'm not sure if I could have landed in a, a, a more uh, comedic pose here with the, the candlelight going and everything. But what's going on in this base is an exploit, I put air quotes around the exploit. This has been in the game for some time now, at least four years. So if there's a, sorry for the epic shotgun traps going on off over there. If there's these snap traps, if you put them above where the player is going, and you force the player to go upwards towards the roof, for example, if I were to jump here, and there's a snap trap above, it your head is technically clipping through the ceiling, and it's going to do damage to you. So if you jump up on the shelf, thinking it's the only way through, and there's 
eight snap traps right above your head, you're gonna hit all of them and they're gonna do super massive damage to you. I think two of them will kill, it, dude, regardless of your armor, regardless of your health, I think two of them will kill anybody. You can also see that there's these pressure plates. The pressure pads here. Let me put a candle hat on so y'all can see better. Get some low grade. These pressure plates here, you can find them all over the place. If you go to the mining outpost or to a gas station, you'll find them super quick. They're, they're, they, they spawn in the, the crates all the time. They actually do something interesting that I wasn't aware of for, for a while. And they produce power on their own. I didn't know that. Uh, I figured it out a few months ago. But you can see that they, they, at first glance, they look like they work like all the other electrical items in the game. You know, they have an input and an output. Well, if you stand on a pressure pad, let me demonstrate down here. If you were to just stand on the one. You can hear the noise. Each time you stand on it, it actually generates one power. But the power only lasts for one second. So, click, it sends one power out for one second. No other trigger items like this in the game do that. For example, the, the laser, the, the, the laser that shines the laser and if you walk through it, it triggers. Or the heartbeat sensor. Like None of these generate power on their own, but this one does. The pressure pad actually does generate power on its own, but it's just for one second, and it's only one power. But what that means is, if you connect it to devices that only require one power, and only need power for one second, you're good. So these pressure pads are actually connected to a smart alarm. The smart alarm sends a message to my iPhone whenever someone comes in the trap base. And I have it set to trap base has a visitor LOL. So and I've tested it out, even though it's only it's you know it's it only sends power for one second, it sends your at your phone a message saying someone has come into your trap base. So I don't have to be here and sit and wait on people. I can let this base harvest things for me, harvest player loot by itself, which is just awesome. There's a door controller here that controls the door. Door controllers typically are used to open doors, but they can also be used to close doors. So if the default state of the door is open, and then someone comes in and activates with their head the pressure pad, by the way, that's another major crux of this trap base is the fact that when a pressure pad is in on the other side of a ceiling and your head hits it, just like the same with the snap traps, it pushes it down just like you had walked over it. And whenever that happens, it sends one power to the door controller which shuts the door instead of opening it. So while there are electrical components in this base, it doesn't actually require any power. There's no solar panels, no wind turbines, no batteries. Just two pressure pads doing all of the work and their army of snap traps, of course. So you come up here, rearm the snap traps after your smartphone tells you that you've had a visitor. And then loot, <laughs> you loot the items and go about your way. You can see up here there's boxes, you know, extra storage boxes for loot and a shotgun trap just to make sure if anything weird happens or if you start getting raided. So it's a, in my opinion, it's a pretty elegant solution to the, the issue with most rust trap bases of having to sit in them all day or requiring these huge expensive circuits or most importantly, and to me this is the biggest one of all, it shuts the door so no one can come in and help them. None of their friends are going to come in and take all the loot. No random naked with a spear is going to come in and headshot you. Of course, of course they headshot you. None of that's going to happen and, and you're going to get everything every time. And then obviously this is the main loot room. If you do build this base, don't build it exactly like this one. I mean, you can, but you run the risk of if someone else has seen the video, then they're going to know the layout of the base and it may not fool as many people. This is mainly just a, a conceptual video, just the concept of using the pressure pads and the snap traps to kill people in your trap base and let you know about it and seal the base all on its own. 
So how do you build this? It's really, really easy. Try to get away from these shotgun blasts. So I'm just gonna build a, a, a mock-up over here. So first you put the pressure pads down and you have to do them one at a time. So there's the first one and then we need a smart alarm. This can be found in monuments or in crates. If they're not, I wouldn't say they're super rare, but they're more rare than some of the other electrical components. And you, you take the power out from the pressure pad and hook it up to the smart alarm. And then you can edit the message to say whatever you want. Make sure that while holding the wiring tool, you pair it to your Rust Plus app on your phone, or it's not going to work. After you've got that done, you put down the second pressure pad and the door. And you also need a door controller. Press E to pair the door controller to the door. And then wire this door controller to the other pressure pad. And now you can see, whenever we stand on it, the alarm goes off. And you can hear the door opening and closing each time. And again, if you leave the door open and then step on it, it'll just close the door. And it's as simple as that. And now you put the snap traps around it. Snap traps are fairly common. It won't be super difficult finding the one of these to blueprint it. Make sure they're not sticking out the side of the base. A lot of times people put snap traps and you can see the little arm here, it's sticking over the edge of the base. It's totally obvious whenever whenever that happens that something in the base is, is not quite right. So put the, the snap traps down, make sure they're not sticking out the, the side of the base. Put lots, air on the side of lots. And then we need a shelf. You can actually do this with half-height walls as well, but the shelf to me is less obvious. Make sure to block the bottom path so they don't go the bottom route. And that's it. I'm going to turn god mode on so I don't die, but... You heard all the step traps go off, that's a guaranteed death, and I just sealed myself in. Obviously you'd want this wall turned around. And the trap base over here also have a ladder hatch. The ladder hatch is dual purpose. One, it has extra storage room and allows you to access and reset the snap traps, but it also blocks off a way in for for any. So if if the snap if the the trap base goes off and something goes wrong and they start raiding or the uh, you know just any. Y'all know how rust is, weird things can happen. If a weird thing happens and for some reason someone's able to get back here, the ladder hatch will actually prevent them from being able to move forward. But you have to put it in this orientation for it to work like that. So it, it, it's, it allows you access up there to reset everything, but it, it's also like an, an, an extra uh, raid protection and an, an extra door to help protect you if you need it. Again, I can't stress enough how important it is to add the twig and, and backwards walls and, and just kind of random stuff that, that make the base look like a, a new built it. It'll make the trap base much more believable. Hope you enjoyed the trap base today, everybody, and thanks for watching.